Acts 13, 42 to 52. As they went out, the people begged that these things might be told them the next Sabbath. And after the meeting of the synagogue uh, broke up, many Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who, as they spoke with them, urged them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began to uh, contradict what was spoken by Paul, reviling him. And Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken first to you, since you thrust it aside and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Behold, we are turning to the Gentiles, for the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord, and as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was spreading throughout the whole region. But the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the city stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their district. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with the joy and with the Holy Spirit. We see a wonderful thing happening here. Paul and Barnabas, along with John Mark, their little entourage is on their first missionary journey. And we see a pattern uh, developing. We see uh, acceptance of Paul, uh, Paul's message and the gospel to uh, some of the Jewish believers and some of the Jewish believers, uh, the, the, those who are proselytes who convert to Judaism and are circumcised and follow the Mosaic law. And then we see a uh, more widespread acceptance among the Gentiles, and we see opposition against uh, some of the uh, against Paul and Barnabas and the message from some of the other Jews, and so they're driven out of the towns they're in, and they go to the next town, and they um, repeat the same pattern by first going into the synagogue and proclaiming, uh, defending. Um, um, the teachings of Jesus and proclaiming the gospel and they get adherence to the message and then they have those that contradict Paul and the message. Uh, we see that salvation first is, uh, the priority of salvation is first to the Gentile, the Jews, and then to the Gentiles. It doesn't mean that the Jews are better than the Gentiles. It just simply means that God uh, ordained to choose to save, uh, to get, bring the message to the Jews first. And then he knew that the message would be rejected. And so then Paul went to the Gentiles. We see in verse 48, a very interesting thing here. We see one of the clearest uh, statements of the doctrine of election. It says those that were appointed believed. We have this human understanding of what that means because we, we say, well, God is all-knowing, all-seeing, He's omniscient. So He just looks down the corridor of time and He sees those who He knows are going to accept the gospel and that's who He saves. Well, that's not how God's sovereignty actually works. God ordained before the foundations of the world 
who would be his chosen, who the elect would be. And this brings us to an application. I'm assuming that most of the people listening to this are part of God's elect. God has called you and me to some purpose. Have you figured out what that purpose is? Sadly, there are people that live many years without truly knowing and realizing and acting upon God's calling over their life. I challenge us all, let this be the day where we pray to the Lord, asking Him to reveal His purpose for all of us. That's all for now.